hello hello there i am claire i'll give it a few minutes to make sure i'm live hello resilience to strengthen and maintain emotional well-being and self-esteem i'm so happy to be here this is exciting i love coming live in other people's groups it's great <laughs> It's a bit like sporting around someone else's house, isn't it? It feels wrong. It feels wrong, but it's like really nice. It's nice to be invited, first of all. And then what a lovely welcome. Janine it was a friendly face. She popped on to say that I'm great. I'm a great speaker. <gasps> no pressure. Um, but I'm here to tell you my story, right? I class myself as one of these knowledge brokers, right? I've been through an experience and now I've taken it on is my mission to pass it on, right? So if this is a problem for you or someone in your life, I'm hoping that my service will give you a shortcut, right? I'm not saying that you can't do this on your own. There's loads of different ways to sort this out, right? But my service is different because instead of you thinking, oh, I mustn't drink, I mustn't drink, I really want to drink, I really want to drink. My mission is to rebrand sober, right? So that my clients are running towards a sober life. Yeah, we're not missing out on anything, actually. We're wishing that we'd done this years ago. Because what I'm finding is that people think sober is boring. But I have found the opposite to be true. For me, sober is energising and revitalising. It gives me more than a glass of wine ever promised me. But it's been such a journey to get here. So let me share with you where I was three years ago. Three years ago, I was sat at my desk with my head in my hands. I had started a new business as a way that I didn't want to return to my job, my office job. I just had two children and I, I needed to find a shortcut so I could stay at home and be the mum I'd always wanted to be. And so we made some big, more, big, bold moves and we decided to buy into property. So that's what we did. And I started helping other landlords to find tenants and to organise maintenance, repairs, refurbishments, everything to do with that. And me and my husband started a business and it was a brilliant success. It was. We were a victim of our own success in, a way, in many ways because it enabled us to just open that second bottle of wine. We didn't book any work in on Mondays. And if we didn't even want to turn up on a Tuesday, we didn't really have to. And I think that just edited us, right? And you can imagine, not just the hangovers, because to be honest, I didn't really suffer from hangover. My tolerance was so high that I could function. And I would function and I would, you know, just keep going and pushing through and pushing through. And then as soon as I got to the weekend, I'd reward myself with more wine and gin, and Prosecco, whatever else was going. I was successful, I was functioning. I had a beautiful home and a beautiful family, but inside I didn't feel all that great. You know, you're talking about emotional well-being. it was like spaghetti on the floor. And it had a way at me, and I think it does this, it eats away at women in a different way to how it affects men. And that's why my service is specifically designed to work with women. That's what I'm so passionate about. You know, us women, we, we give ourselves such a hard time. And I might be turning up here and a lot of women are thinking, Claire, please don't take away my wine. That's the only thing I've got. You know, that's the only thing I can rely on. And I get it because I felt like that too. And, and so what I tried to do is I tried to moderate. I tried to cut down and I would make rules for myself. And every rule I made, I would break. So I would say, I'm not drinking through the week. I'm not having more than one glass of wine. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. And I did, I did, I did every time. And it got to the point where I just used to beat myself up about it, feeling like I was just useless, right? And I would swing from thinking that I was the worst person in the world. And the next minute I would be defending all my actions and telling myself to not be hard on myself. Now, if this resonates with you, you know, women tell me that this is how they feel about if they're eating too much or 
you know, obviously if they're drinking too much, but this, this is just a cycle that would go on, right? And I just needed it to stop. And it wasn't until I was doing some research online, another fad diet had failed, right? Because as my, as my waist expanded, right? Just like the, for, for the dry days in my house were getting less and less and less as my waist was expanding more and more and more. And you know, I tried everything. I would take photographs of myself. I've still shared the one here. To, to shame myself into some sort of action and I don't really know what it was I was trying to achieve. Because even if I worked so hard all week on my food and my exercise, I would ruin it all as soon as I got the Thursday because my weekends weren't just the weekends, you know, the extended weekend. I don't know if, if you can relate to that. So this was just a cycle I found myself on and obviously I would attack my loved one, my, my husband, and he would be drinking too much and would all be feeling, you know, our level of normal was good, just getting lower as the tolerance for the stuff increased because month on month we were drinking more of the stuff, you know? We would drink because we'd had a good day, we'd drink because we'd had a bad day, we'd drink just to get through the bedtime routine. It was just everywhere I turned and I felt like my body just couldn't take any more. It was horrible. I was overweight and bloated and uncomfortable. I was just, I just wasn't happy with myself at all. And as I said, I was researching online, looking for another magic solution. And I came across a fitness instructor who had stopped drinking completely. I'd never even considered stopping drinking. That hadn't even entered my mind. I just wanted to control this, right? I wanted to just cut down. I couldn't imagine my life without it. I couldn't imagine going on holiday or having a weekend with the girls or even a date with my husband without it. But slowly as I started observing other people, because she introduced me to other communities of women who were obviously sorting this out, who were choosing sober and who were becoming successful and, you know, they were doing things that they'd always wanted to do. And there was me thinking, well, what is it that I want to do? I don't even know. I don't even know what I want. And so I turned to my bookshelf and there they were lined up all the self-help books I'd ever bought and never had the inclination or the energy to implement any of the strategies. And I just started with one book and worked my way through it and then went to the next book and worked my way through it. And slowly, slowly I pieced myself together and I found out who, who was that I was and what it was that I wanted. And it's an ongoing process, but it was the first domino for me to knock that down and then everything else just seemed to fall into place. I was, in, I was able to find out what it was that was pissing me off and, and I had the energy to focus on that and, and sort it out and you know some of the things now like the houses we wanted to sell and you know one of them completed yesterday and I'm three years sober it's taken this long so to get things sorted and how I really want them to be. And I think so many times women are, are stuck in this trap of of thinking that they haven't got control over things, but honestly, trust me, it just gives you so much more energy when the, when the sleep improves. You know, normal, a normal pattern of sleep, you would, you would enjoy seven REM cycles of sleep. When you drink, and even a small amount, that goes right down to two. And that's the deep, refreshing sleep that you need in order to feel energized the following day. So can you imagine how many years of broken sleep I'd had that I needed to catch up on? It was like I was healing from some traumatic event. But I took time. I started to enjoy sitting at home with fluffy socks on and reading a book and lighting a candle. And I just slowed everything down. And it took a long time because there was a transition period from that life to this life. And there's days that where it feels really hard and it feels really lonely, but if you you can get through it and, and I've created exactly the plan that I went through and I'd like to quickly share it with you before I finish. I want to share this with you and then see if anyone has any questions. But I'm happy if you watch on replay 
to come back in and answer any questions in the comments so if you do have any questions please just shout um and this is the system so i've worked really hard for the last two years to get my message out there in order to support other women you see this is so important to me because i lost my friend my friend was was the person who really inspired me to look at this i watched her health decline she was 52 and i lost her at, at the beginning of the first lockdown and i don't know whether this would have helped her and I've understood from other ladies who've been further down a crisis point that, you know, maybe I'm inviting ladies off the train earlier and there might be a point where it's too late. I don't know. We don't know at what point that happens. I was always intrigued to know where was the line between my fun and her problem because I would sit with her and I could drink more than her. But why was my life not falling apart? It turned into like a competition endurance so almost test. We were drinking the same drink and I couldn't shake that feeling. I really couldn't. And I wanted to, I wanted to create something because I felt like her, her main issue was shame, right? At one point we used to go walking every day and she was doing so well, but she fell and she grazed her face and she, she wasn't drunk cause she'd been with me. It was the morning. And then the next day when she went to the shop, she bumped into friends or other people. You know, they were saying, oh, you've been drunk again. And so she didn't come walking again until her face, well, she said until her face healed, she never came again. And I think society has got it all wrong. I know when I, I talk to women, they're so worried about what their friends are gonna think if they do this. We should be applauding health seeking behavior. It shouldn't be even an issue if, if, if a friend of yours decides that they want to do this and they want to tackle it. All that's doing is showing a mirror to them and that's making them feel uncomfortable. But that's what my program will help everyone get through that and help at each stage of the game. That's where I've been. I've been through it so I can walk you through it, you know, where you're going to hit these hurdles, if you like. And I can support you through that with my sober pen pal service. I've got a service for all you can think of. Right? But what happens is, stage one, right, would start off stuck like Susie. Now, Susie has no idea that the problems in her life are due to the alcohol in her glass. She believes it's the glue that's holding her whole life together. If you were to suggest to Susie that she should stop drinking, she'd think you were crazy. We've all been there, me included. But then, maybe she gets introduced to someone like Ollie. Now, Ollie's been observing other people who are sober for a while now. She's looking at it a little bit like if you looked at me in this dress and thought, well, what will that look like on you? She's thinking, how will this impact my life? How will it impact my health, my wealth, my relationships? And then something happens where she just decides that she wants to be bold and she picks up the phone or she sends an email to me or she decides herself that it's day one. And she's deciding now that she's going to tackle this, right? She sees the benefits and she wants a bit of that. And at this stage, there's no talk about if we're giving up forever. It doesn't matter. Let go of that. It doesn't matter. And when you get to here, which many people are here, right? Including my husband. But this next stage is also tricky. This is when you would become engaged like Elsie, where you go into the parties and you're having the difficult conversations with your friends. Okay, and you, you turn it up and you're saying, well, actually, this is actually quite cool. I can drive myself home after a night out and I can remember everything that happened. And I spent four quid. You know, it's like, it's a different world. And then you start figuring it out and thinking, oh my God, and then I can get up the next day and I've still got the whole weekend ahead of me. And you get back all this time and you start to decide what it is that you want and you start spending time with other positive people who are also enjoying life and squeezing everything out of it. They're not lying in bed hungover, feeling sorry for themselves. And you become rebalanced like Riley. Then you find yourself thinking, well, what is it that I'm missing out on? I'm not missing out on anything. I can go to the parties. I can catch up with my friends. I just don't have to have poison in my glass. And at any time, because this isn't a pass or fail, it's so simple that at any time, if you slip back, if you're feeling bold and you slip back, you'd never come back here, you can't come back here, you can't, you can't unknow 
what you now know. Because women believe that they need more willpower, but my service is more about you spending time with somebody who's been there and who has a plan and who can walk you through from where you are now, right the way through to where you want to be. And they'll be there for you throughout the whole way. Now, I've got it all set up on an automated program. So if you think this is something that you would benefit from finding out about, then I would love for you to reach out. If you've got any questions, just ask them in the comments and I'll be more than happy to pop back on and reply. And thank you for watching. That's me. I'll see you soon. <laughs>